Today we are going to draw and talk about the life of Werner von Siemens. Siemens was born on December 30 of 1860. Werner is six years old when his parents take over the lease in Mensdorf, a small manor in the Principality of Ratzeburg. Werner later writes that those were happy years. But the life isn't without difficulties. His father is strict. Although only a child himself, Werner is responsible for looking after his younger brothers and sisters. Werner learns how to assert himself. With 18 years old, Werner sets off to walk to Berlin because he wants to go to the Academy of Architecture, but his father knows nothing about the natural science, and there is no money to finance his son's higher education in Berlin. But he, no he knew that he can realize his dream if he stays here. He joins the Prussian army to gain access to a scientific and technical education, but first he must go through Burning military training. Everything process as planned. Werner von Siemens becomes an officer candidate and is sent to the Berlin Artillery and Engineering School in 1835. He discovers a world new world mathematics, physics, and chemistry. Berlin is a major city, a gathering place for scientific advance and weight. For three years, he plans into a fascinating new world. Full of curiosity and enthusiasm, he starts to work on his own research. In 1838, the army orders Werner von Siemens to Magdeburg, where his parents do day to day, life in the barracks. But his passion has been awakened. Then two pieces of sad news reach him in quick succession. His mother dies in July 1839. He is hit hard by the loss. His father dies six months later. Everything suddenly changed for Warner von Siemens. He feels responsible for his brothers and sisters. The youngest is only three years old. The state is deeply in debt. He must take action, do what he can to take care of the family. But he's stuck in Magdeburg. He has no choice. Neither his oldest brother nor his sister can support the family. Werner feels the obligation to do his duty. He will redirect his research in a way that offers practical benefits and brings in orders. He starts with what he knows, military equipment. He subjected an innovative detonator. But the experiments failed. The explosion burst his air drum, and he still doesn't have a marketable product. He stumbles on earlier research about electroplating. He soon recognizes the potential offered by the electrochemical coding method. He decides to follow the path and attempt gold planting. The experiment is a success. Werner von Siemens is convinced that he is on the right path. Werner keeps working at top speed, this time with the objective 
of attending his inventions and then selling the the patents. On his third birthday, he takes stock and makes a momentous decision. The hunt for invention isn't having the desired results, so he will have to change his strategy. When he decides to have everything on one card, electrical telegraph, the possibility of sending messages quickly and reliably, a market of the future. But he also knows he wants success on his own. He needs a partner. In 1847, Bernard von Siemens meets Johann Hirsch Hulsk a precision mechanic with an extraordinary talent for design. Bernard von Siemens doesn't hesitate because that's exactly what he needs to put his project into practice. A brilliant designer. He attempts to recruit Halsk as a partner. But Halsk is a skeptical. Only at this setup we convince him for the potential of the new pointer telegraph. The technology makes it possible to transmit messages much faster, a groundbreaking invention that promises a lucrative business. <coughs> Hulk's impeccably designed pointer telegraph plays a major role in convincing the telegraph commission of the Prussian army to award a contract to the new company for construction of a 670km line. The objective is a false connection between Berlin and Frankfurt. The first German National Assembly has been meeting there since May 1848. In 1851, the young entrepreneurs are hard hit by the end of all business relations with Prussia. Bernard von Siemens feels it up to him to avert the impending crisis and increases his efforts to develop markets in other countries. He wants to expand which he succeeds in doing, but this will ultimately lead to the breakup with Husk. Travel conditions are anything but comfortable. Bernard von Siemens travels to St. Petersburg by a stagecoach and is led in 1852. One thousand eight hundred fifty-three. He 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 is awarding a, a contract to install a line from Saint Petersburg to Konstrad, including a lucrative maintenance contract. A construction office is opened in Saint Petersburg, headed by Werner's brother Karl. The business flourishes to some extent because current events play into the hands of the Siemens brothers. In 1855, the company is awarded the contract to run telegraph lines all the way to the Black Sea. This is to be done as quickly as possible with a very big budget, passing track the Crimean War Zone. The company in Berlin is soon flourishing thanks to the success in Russia. The company grows to 330 employees by 1856. Its export radio rise to as much as 80 percent at times. But the closer Baron von Siemens has to his vision of a global business, 
the more distant his partner Hals becomes. 1874. Bernard von Siemens was recognized by the Prussian Academy of Science. This recognition means for him more than any other award. He has been included in the Europe of Learned Academy, but that joy didn't last a long time. He received a disturbing letter saying that the Faraday has struck an iceberg. That ship was a new Siemens Brother cable lashing ship that will connect Europa and America with telegraph. It will be a financial catastrophe. His message was a fake, one of many dirty tricks that constantly written the project. Partner starts to have doubts about the project problem. There is a break in the cable. The working cable is now 5,000 meters down. William loses his nerves and calls for his brother Carl to be removed. Partner orders to stop the ship temporarily. Two days pass, and then there are safe information that the anchor hit the end of the cable. The cable can be retrieved and the problem fixed. But the joy did not last. The Siemens brothers must continually cope with various problems. In January of 1875, due to the strong storms, Carl spent the cable laying until the spring. Finally, in September 1st, the cable is into place and the telegraph line is operating. In a short time, 13% of all telegrams across the Atlantic travel over the Siemens cable. But there are many failures in the cable. Werner von Siemens retain independent specialists to investigate and they conclude that the failures are due to sabotage. Siemens brothers lay another eight transatlantic cables by 1901. It is still just a bad idea, but Werner von Siemens has defined his on the rig track. He is working on a powerful generator that will operate without the auxiliary power that has been required up to this point. Werner von Siemens builds the dynamo machines in 1866, paving the way for modern large generators. The dynamo machines, it will change the world. Electric power to dry machines can finally be generated inexpensively and on a large scale. This opens the door to universe use of electric power. Werner von Siemens has achieved his goal. All his life he has felt the drive to create something lasting for himself, for his family. By 1880, his company is the universal supplier of electrical engineering to the Hermann market. The small workshop in the back coat year has become a transnational technology company with production locations in England, Russia and Austria. He is 70 years old and is still in charge. Times have changed. Competitors are moving onto the market, bringing innovative products and modern strategies with them. Siemens is under pressure. The Sherman market is diversifying and competitors are quickly expanding. Companies all over the world are moving into the power engineer business. One competitor is particularly successful, known as AAC for short. Its founder favors the very business model that Werner von Siemens fundamentally reshits. IAC offers complete solutions. It is a single source for project management, planning, construction, and operation of power. Plants, lighting systems, or electric highways. For example, IAC is also a stock company that can find finance its major project on the capital market. Werner von Siemens knows the opportunities as well as the risks. He completed one major project, the, Transat the transatlantic cable, based on the operator model. It was ultimately very successful. Werner leads the Berlin company in close cooperation with his brother Karl. It's not until 1890, at age 73, that he hands over management of the company to his sons Arnold and Wilhelm. 
but he retains control and continues to make decisions on far-reaching issues himself.